Looting in TX comes to screeching halt after what cops give pissed off victims permission to do sadly, apart from taking down boards and cutting down trees, neighborhoods in Texas are also dealing with the fear of looters. But since Texans are a far cry from New Orleans, Ferguson, or Baltimore residents, Texans are not about to stand idly by while low-life criminals take their hard-earned possessions. They have sent out a strong but simple message to anyone even thinking about burglarizing their property, you loot, I shoot. The best part of all this is, now the actual police have said that if you catch anyone looting in your property you have every right to put them down and send them home in a body bag. Don't mess with Texas. FBI reports, Katrina, four years later fraud. Corruption cases continue FEMA issued debit cards worth $2,000 in the weeks following Katrina. To date, more than 1,300 people have been indicted for Katrina-related crimes, including stealing government funds. FEMA issued debit cards worth $2,000 in the weeks following Katrina. To date, more than 1,300 people have been indicted for Katrina-related crimes, including stealing government funds. In the devastating aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, the federal government began pouring billions of dollars into New Orleans and the Gulf Coast region to aid recovery efforts and the criminal justice system braced for the fraud and corruption that would surely follow all that money. Today, four years after the storm struck on August 29, 2005, the FBI and our law enforcement partners continue to aggressively investigate and prosecute Katrina-related crimes. Last Friday, for example, the United States Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of Louisiana announced 18 new felony indictments stemming from citizens fraudulently obtaining assistance from the American Red Cross and the Louisiana Road Home Program. There have also been many cases of public corruption associated with Katrina, said David Welker, special agent in charge of our New Orleans office. When it comes to criminal activity and public officials trying to siphon off funds meant for projects to rebuild the area, he said, we maintain a zero-tolerance policy. We won't stop pursuing these cases no matter how much time passes disaster fraud. JPG If you have knowledge of fraud waste and abuse, call the Disaster Fraud Hotline at 866-720-5721. Three three four four seven zero seven. Email disaster at leo.gov or write National Center for Disaster Fraud, Baton Rouge, Louisiana seven zero eight two one. All calls can be anonymous and confidential. Within days of the hurricane, the Department of Justice established the Hurricane Katrina Fraud Task Force, since renamed the National Center for Disaster Fraud, to deter, investigate and prosecute disaster-related federal crimes. The task force comprised of federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies, as well as the United States Attorney's offices is located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and it has not lacked for business. To date, more than 1,300 individuals have been indicted for Katrina-related crimes. The task force has received more than 36,000 complaints since 2005 and has referred some 22,500 to law enforcement for possible investigation. The FBI has received nearly 4,800 of those referrals. Some of the cases are shocking. Earlier this month, a former chief of police in Lumberton, Mississippi was sentenced to 2.5 years in jail after being convicted on eight federal fraud charges in connection with lying to receive aid for a property that was not his primary residence. The former chief was found guilty of stealing government funds, lying to the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, and committing wire fraud. At sentencing, the judge ordered him to repay FEMA more than $29,000 and noted that he had betrayed the public trust and seriously tarnished the image of law enforcement. In New Orleans, Special Agent in Charge Welker said public corruption and government fraud cases increased 243% during 2006-2008 compared with the years before Katrina, 2003-2005. 
Putting a stop to this fraud and corruption has prevented an economic loss estimated at more than $55 million, he said. We also continue to target violent crime. The city had a high murder rate before Katrina, and it's even worse now. The New Orleans Violent Crime Task Force was established a year ago to target the baddest of the bad, those criminals who ride the revolving door of the criminal justice system. The task force consists of federal, state, and local law enforcement officers co-located at our New Orleans office and focuses on violent crimes including kidnapping, carjacking, armed robbery, and murder. Katrina had such an impact on the region, Welker explained. It turned this world upside down. When the storm hit, our headquarters in the city was ruined, and many bureau employees there lost their homes. But now, as then, he said, despite the circumstances, the work of the office doesn't stop. Bureau culture is to work until the job is done and that's just what we intend to do with Katrina Crimes. This is so great that it makes this lifelong Californian want to pack up and move to Texas. In this loony left-wing state, we have no right to put anyone down, even if they are committing a violent crime, in our own property, to our own family or friends. It's the mentality of the left to always want to side with the criminal. We see it when they decided the death penalty hurts too much and by the way, they support illegal immigration. They have even taken it upon themselves to force us to get a permit to buy ammo starting next year. A permit that of course costs $50 plus fees per year. This state's democratic agenda never loses unless it involves illegals who will continue to vote for corrupt politicians such as Gavin Newsom, Jerry Brown, or Kamala Harris who have run this once great state to the abyss, the Democrat abyss, where an illegal alien is more important and has more rights than an American-born citizen or legal resident. We don't need no